Well, this is pretty embarrassing. Newsweek was forced to recall 125,000 copies of a special Madam President edition. Two versions were printed, one for Trump and one for Clinton. But only the Clinton version was sent to newsstands on election night. How'd that happen? Here now is Matt Cooper, political editor for Newsweek. Matt, it's great to see you. It's great to see you, Tucker. Thank you. So it was, look, I mean, everyone makes screw-ups like this, and I'm, you know, I'm not here to mock you for that. It's the content of it that was unbelievable. And it was so unbelievable, actually, that I've got to put it on the screen. I want to read part of the introduction to the Madam President edition. Um, it describes this, uh, as the tone of the election grew darker and more bizarre by the day, President-elect Hillary Clinton went high when her opponent and his supporters went even lower. No stranger to trudging through the mire of misogyny in her career as First Lady, Senator, and Secretary of State, President Clinton managed to push for issue, an issues-based campaign, even as a handful of Trump's deplorable supporters, seeing the wide margin she held among female voters, called for repealing the 19th Amendment. It goes on and on. Fear and hate-based conservatism. I mean, it's not even, it's breathless, it's not even hagiographic. It's pornographic. It's Soviet in his, in his devotion to Hillary Clinton. How, who wrote this? It, it, it's embarrassing. And um, let, me, let me tell you how it happened and uh, what we're doing to make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, Newsweek, like a lot of uh, publications, uh, puts out special commemorative issues. Yeah. You've probably seen them on the news. Yeah. Dance, you know, 75th anniversary of D-Day. Or, yeah. you know, we have one out about Harrison Ford's uh, acting career. This is a big part of the magazine business now. Yeah. And what we did for the election was the company that we subcontract to, uh, as you said in the intro, produced two, two editions. One, President Trump. The other, right. Madam President. Uh, they both, uh, you know, the Madam President one mistakenly went out, which was the first embarrassment. Yeah. That should never have happened. And, uh, but I can kind but, of see how it happened. Yeah, but it can happen. But really, they, as you say, the writing in this is, uh, is, shall we say, not up to the editorial well, it's just standards of pure history. throne sniffing. I mean, it's just like DNC talking points. So, I mean, no, wh who on your staff wrote that? Well, no one on our staff wrote it. Again, we subcontract out to a company. But when that, you read it before it went out, what well, did you no, say? Well, no, we didn't, and that's, and that's part what of the problem. What do you mean, problem. you didn't read it before it went out? See, we subcontract these commemorative issues to a company, and this is pretty common in the magazine business now. The company that does it for us does stuff for Reader's Digest or Scientific Wait, nobody Records. read this before? Well, let me just finish. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it, it's sort of been done on a separate track, and we did not review it before it went out. Well, but what at, if they had like, reprinted Mein Kampf or something? I mean, you Well, if they had know. reprinted Mein Kampf, that would have been even worse. There's no question. Look. Um, well, but what if Fox just said we're going to give an hour of primetime air to like some well, random crazy person? We're not going to look at it before it goes on. Well, uh, look, uh, this is a company that's done a lot of work for a lot of other magazines, Scientific American, CBS, Disney, all kinds of places, and they generally do good work. In this case, they really did not. And uh, what we're going to do from now on is really take a look at these things. Uh, even though we didn't, you know, over at regular Newsweek didn't put it out, you know, we're ultimately responsible for I mean, no, for I mean, now, you're an old friend of mine, I'm just going to say this out loud, and yeah, no, I'm no. a fan. That seems so reckless and crazy to let someone else take over your magazine and not even check what they're writing. Yeah, well, again, it's, it is a separate kind of track, but I, look, I hear you, it's got the Newsweek name on it. Yeah, well, it's right here, Newsweek. Ultimately, we're going to bear responsibility. <laughs> for, well, that's like, you know, that's like with the World Series, you know. Yeah, but it says Newsweek, and maybe I'm dumb, like... If iPhone, if you know Apple released an iPhone made in Bangladesh that didn't work, I would hold them responsible for it. You right. know what I mean? No, look, there's no question. The writing that you've cited, and it's uh, one of the Daily Caller reporters uh, did a good job uh, yeah. sussing it out. Look, there's no question. That's so here's not okay. So what kind of blew my mind was not just that, but some of the other coverage. So you've got this guy Kurt Eichenwald who works for you. He tweeted out in September. This tweet says, I believe Donald Trump was institutionalized in a mental hospital for a nervous breakdown, which is why he won't release his medical records. No evidence of that at all. Newsweek wouldn't answer any questions about why he did that or back up his claim. And then they allowed him to keep covering the campaign. Why? That seems really nutty to me, making an allegation like that and not backing it up. Well, I can't speak to that tweet. I don't know about it. Um, let me just say this. I mean, Kurt's done some incredible reporting for Newsweek, so, you know, I'm 100% uh, you know, behind what he's done in the magazine in terms of, uh, you know, sussing through uh, Donald Trump's uh, finances. Uh, he did a great cover a few weeks ago about how uh, Trump's organization had violated the Cuban embargo. I mean, I'm not saying everything he's r writing is wrong or anything, or he's a bad person or anything, but he's such an anti-Trump advocate. And it's so clear on his Twitter feed and in his pieces, you can't really pass him off as a reporter, can you? Well, look, I think uh, I, I think his writing, you know, speaks for itself, and people are going to have to judge judge it as it is. But I think for the stories, you know, leaving tweets aside, I think you know, judging from the stories in Newsweek, uh, you know, did, did he write this? No. <laughs> 
now it's the, <laughs> now you're just baiting me. <laughs> now you're baiting me. <laughs> you're Back here, we're great to see you. Hey, if you like this video, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. It really helps get the message out there, and it really motivates me to make more videos. Thanks a lot.